Hey guys, Calvin Russell here, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today, we're going to talk to you guys about how can you save for a house with everything that's going on right now in the world, the economy, um, you know, and your income and things of that sort. How can you still do that uh, effortlessly, right, uh, in these times? Let's talk about it. So, of course, the first thing is actually creating the plan, okay? And you can't create a plan unless you know what your credit report looks like, okay? So, take a look at, not, I'm sorry, not just necessarily the credit report uh, but of course you want to make sure that you'll that you have that in place okay now assuming that that isn't that the scores are where we need to be remember in order to qualify for a home there's three categories that's 580 to 620 that's going to be to get your foot in the door you can qualify for a home you won't have the best terms but you can most definitely qualify for a home but don't worry about that because you can easily refinance out of those not so good terms uh, the second range is going to be from 620 uh, plus essentially uh, and that's where you can still uh, obviously get FHA but now you're going to qualify for the best terms that FHA has to provide and then you have conventional uh, which is going to be you know 680 and higher some banks that go as low as 620 650 uh, but usually they're going to be somewhere between about 680 to 724 conventional so assuming you got that in place then you want to go ahead and create your plan so the first thing you want to do is now look at your uh, transaction history. See where your money is going. I know no one wants to do that. Uh, we already kind of know the answer. It's going to food and entertainment, right? <laughs> or food and life. And then so, because that's what we live for, right? We work, we make the money, and we try to enjoy ourselves. And it feels good to have an experience. It feels good to, uh, to obviously eat something that tastes good, right? These are things that we do on a daily basis. Um, so you got to see like, where is the money going? Where are the bottlenecks? Is there something that you are paying for that you're not using that gym membership that you said that you bought that you, you ain't used in months? Um, or it could also be um, another um, account that you might have or a subscription service that you just don't use anymore. Keeping an eye on that. That most definitely plays um, a role. And then, of course, uh, number two is, you know, sticking to the plan. OK, um, you know, as you're sticking to the plan, you're being consistent. Um, you're making sure that you're constantly, you know, because now with number one, we said, OK, this is what I can save. I can save, you know, um, you know, X amount of dollars, one hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars a month, whatever the case may be. Right. And as you're able to kind of knock some of these things down or say, OK, this is what I need to adjust this. And you can again, you can always consider having a side hustle, um, you know, as well. So as long as you're following that plan and you're saying, OK, uh, let me go ahead and see how can I bring in an extra hundred dollars a month, an extra two fifty, an extra five hundred, an extra thousand dollars a month. And you can easily do that by picking up a side hustle. There's you know, you, there's so many different things that are out there uh, that people are doing from delivering food to delivering, you know, shipping items. All that type of stuff can easily be done. And you're taking that money and you're saving it each and every single month. And that's going to, going to be a uh, and that's going to be a part of that plan as well. OK, number three, don't touch the savings. Don't touch it. That's the I think that's kind of difficult, obviously, because things do happen. Um, I always like to kind of compare it to a rainstorm. We know that on planet Earth, it has to rain someday. Right. And so when it does rain, um, are you going to be prepared financially? Right. Um, and you know, do you have that financial umbrella, uh, you know, ready for that? Is it always the liquid savings account? Maybe it should be a second savings account where one is for emergencies and the other one is for the house. Right. And sometimes we end up using the same accounts. Usually people have two accounts, one for checking, one for saving, and they got all their savings in there and they say, all right, well, what you saving for? Well, I'm saving for a house. Well, it, OK, well, you know, that's all in one account. But aren't you saving for something else inside that same account? So it's OK to have multiple accounts, but you most definitely just don't want to touch that money. All right. And then number four, here's a the deal. There's down payment assistance available, guys. So even if, let's say, for example, the house that you want, you can always talk. To, by the way, you can always talk to a lender, ask questions, talk to a real estate agent, ask questions. Um, and then we could find out what your estimated amount of money that you would need to close on a property. OK, for example, if you want to buy a two hundred thousand dollar property, you're probably going to be somewhere between ten to twelve thousand dollars due at closing. OK, sounds like a lot. But <laughs> but after a while, it's, it's really not. 
Um, and then once once you have that saved, you say, okay, that's my number. I need to have ten thousand. Let's say you got seven thousand dollars. Well, you just need to do a couple of different things. You can ask for a seller credit. Okay, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to give it to you, but the market is starting to sway in a different direction a little bit. Um, there's a lot more inventory. There's a lot more price cuts and price drops that we're starting to see. So we may be swinging back into a buyer's market here, which is still good. You still want to have that um, in place. And then of course you have, like I mentioned, down payment uh, assistance programs. Um, there are some are state-based, some are lender-based. Uh, let me break that down. So state-based means that you're going to get money from the state. Lender-based means that you're getting money from the lender. And then you have area-based, which means that if you're buying a home in a certain area that meets certain qualifications, um, then you may qualify for down payment assistance as well. So there's a lot of different things that are out here that are in place. And again, we're never trying to talk you into home ownership. You're already paying the state somewhere anyway. You just got to say to yourself, do I like where my money is going based on the place that I'm staying? And so let's say if you're renting, right? There's nothing wrong with renting. But if you're renting a place for, let's say, $1,600, but then you could easily live in that same neighborhood and have your own home for $1,600 or less, and that or less does happen, um, you know, then essentially that's what you're looking at. Um, you know, so all of that plays a major role, but it's most definitely doable with the right plan and strategy. So if you like this video, like it. If you want to share it, share it. And as always, be sure to subscribe as we got nothing but great content well on the way. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Thank you.